Now that you've had a chance to think on your own, I want you to do a little bit of table talk. Discuss with your uh, lab partner what did you come up with and see how it's the same or different from what they came up with. <laughs> A few years ago, I was taking a class at, at Georgia Tech for, for a, is like a teacher in-service class, and we went around and we spoke to some professors at Georgia Tech, and they said that the biggest problem that they were hearing from employers who are hiring students from Georgia Tech is their students couldn't work with groups. They were not able to collaborate. And so Georgia Tech was making a big drive to work on this with their students. And I feel like we need to start that down here at the lowest level. I really feel that it's important for students to collaborate with each other often and on a variety of topics because by collaboration, they're thinking of things in a different way. For example, if I'm working on a project with another student, I'm gonna hear their ideas that may not have ever occurred to me. They're gonna hear my ideas that may have never occurred to them. So by grouping and collaborating, students are, I feel like that synergy that goes on is so much stronger than anything they could come up with on their own. When students come to seventh grade, they're not used to working in groups. They're so used to a style of teaching that doesn't require them to communicate with others, that doesn't require them to collaborate, that it's something we really have to teach them. I like to group and regroup my students regularly. Um, every time we start a new unit or a new project, I regroup the students. It's easy for kids to get into the habit of working with the same few people all the time, and I don't want them to develop that habit. I want them, when they grow up and go to college and get jobs, to be able to work with anybody in some way to, to do a task or finish a job. Mm -hmm.